Hello and welcome to the Endgame Rackham Overview Guide. This guide's just going to show you how to play Rackham, some of his rotations, overview of his abilities, his passives, the Endgame sigils to use, and general guides on how to play this fantastic character. So Rackham is a great ranged DPS that can output consistent damage relying on his unique charge skill Bullseye Blast. His first passive is Sleight of Hand, his charge attack Bullseye Blast will charge faster depending on how high the heat guard is. General advice is to just stay within the top two tiers. Any, any lower and it becomes quite slow and, and most likely a DPS loss. So just try to stay within preferably the max tier, but you can get away with the second tier as well. Rackham's second passive is Rhythmic Trigger. By long pressing the attack button, you can fire short bursts of damage. What makes this really useful is by timing this short burst, you can deal extra damage every time you press your attack button. So this is something I don't see a lot of people doing. They tend to mash the attack button, but by long pressing using your short burst skill, you can deal lots of extra damage. So keep that in mind when fighting. A very important mechanic for Rackham is his heat gauge. It has five different levels and the levels will indicate how fast your charge attack shoots out. The first tier is pretty slow. You really want to hover around the fourth or fifth tier, preferably the max tier, but it's something that increases with every damage skill that you use. There's also some buffs that will also increase your heat gauge. So always be paying attention to this heat gauge is one of his most important mechanics since he heavily relies on his charge attacks. His charge attack is Bullseye Blast. This is your bread and butter skill. This is the skill you want to be using almost at all times. If you don't have any actives up, it will just charge based on how high your heat gauge is and using your Bullseye Blast will use up some of your heat gauge unless you have Wild Gunsmoke active. That's the only time when the heat gauge won't really go down as well as during link attacks or link time that will also be able to spam Bullseye Blast while losing any of your link gauge. So it's your most important skill. It's the skill you are going to be playing. If you don't like this particular skill or the play style, you're not really going to like this character because that's how you deal the damage is how you um, output consistency with this character. Now, Rackham also has some other skills, some aerial skills. I don't recommend using them. We have launch. This skill lets you pull a character up in the air to follow it up or maybe let your teammates wail on him. It's really not a good skill. I don't recommend it at all. And it's a huge DPS loss to even attempt something like this. He also has some air skills. Once again, these skills I do not recommend. They're very low damage. They don't combo into anything and they're not really worth. So we have the aerial combo. And we also have the aerial barrage. Now the barrage also is using your, your shotgun attack. Now the issue with this skill is that it's very short range and very likely you're only going to get a couple of hits. You can max get four hits, but you have to be on top of them and it's really not a good DPS skill. So don't really recommend using any of his aerial skills. They're just not very good. I would just stick to using your bullseye blast. All right, let's go through his skills. So his first skill here is Spitfire. This does a decent amount of damage while applying a small 10% defense down. What's really nice about this ability is you can use your charge attack into Spitfire into another charge attack pretty reliably, and it has a pretty short cooldown. So it's something that comes up pretty quickly. Definitely a decent skill. A lot of people have it in their skill set. Next up, we have Coffin Maker. So this skill will shoot a consistent amount of damage, stream of bullets. You can activate this skill pretty much at any point and it will just use up the cooldown it has left. So it's it has that type of utility. It does decent damage, pretty much takes around 50 seconds to fully recharge, but it's definitely a nice DPS skill for Arakum. Our next skill here is Bullet Hail. So this shoots a range attack that showers the area with bullets. It can hit lots of different enemies and 
it is a small delay from when you fire it to when the bullets come out this can actually be helpful because it will start charging up your heat gauge once the damage comes down so you can start firing bullseye blast while the bullet hail is coming down so it has a little bit of usefulness it has around 45 second cooldown and it's better against mobs but you can still use it in boss fights next up is slack shot so this fires wind element bullets that explode on contact it's really not very good it doesn't deal good damage it's arguably used for mobs but you're really not going to be in a lot of situations especially in the late game where this really comes up you can be close to the enemy to get all the bullets to hit the same target but even when you do that the damage is not really impressive and i really haven't found a good reason to run this skill at all Next up we have collateral damage. So this is a really powerful skill that gets that triggers damage cap a lot, but it will blast Rackham and all foes within the blast radius. So you do have to be careful. You want to once this fires off, you want to dodge backwards so that you don't get hit by the blast damage. So it's an interesting mechanic to have this actively something you have to consider. Its cooldown is also fairly long, around two and a half minutes, but it does do insane damage. And definitely, if you are doing any time attacks, it's definitely going to be a DPS increase to have it in there. So you do have to be in the right range or it will miss. Next up, we have Wad Gunsmoke. I would say this is generally a core ability for him, not because of the attack boost or the crit rate boost, even though that can be nice if you haven't hit damage cap. But generally, it maxes out your heat gauge and also stops the heat gauge from decreasing for around a couple seconds. But it lets you get multiple uh, bullseye blasts out in that window. It does have this debuff of lowering your defense by 30. But usually you want to be able to dodge or not have any issues. And generally in the late game, everything's going to one-shot you anyways. So it doesn't really matter that you're losing defense because you go from being one-shot to being one-shot. So... It's not really a concern, but the fact that it charges up your max, your heat gauge is very useful. And also it stops your gauge from decreasing a lot. You just fire bullseye blast and bullseye blast. It's a really nice skill. I consider it core, but some players do think it's unnecessary since you are going to be hitting damage cap anyways. And it's not really giving you any value in that aspect. Next up is double tap. This will increase the number of hits dealt by your basic auto attacks. So this does increase your burst fire, your regular fire. It's a D it's a nice DPS increase. I find it useful for increasing your heat gauge rather quickly since you are getting extra bullets off, which will increase your heat gauge faster. So. I kind of like it. It's a good DPS increase. It lasts a long time, around 30 seconds. It has a cooldown around 90 seconds. So pretty good uptime on this ability. And you can just use it anytime all of your other skills are off cooldown. And then lastly, we have Duration. So this is our defensive skill for Rackham. It is a continuous dodging mover that can just you can just move around with. Lasts a couple seconds of pure dodging. And a really nice benefit is if you do dodge something with duration, it will max out your heat gauge. So something you can use early if you're missing heat gauge to just get that max off and then start pelting your foes with your charged attacks. So pretty good defensive skill. If you need this, if you're having trouble in a fight or anything like that, you can put this on and see if it helps you out. So let's look at some example skill setups. I generally personally like doing something like this here we have coffin maker spitfire double tap wand, wild gun smoke it lets me start off with the wild gun smoke max my heat gauge out then i can just pelt until it runs out use spitfire start pelting use coffin maker and then start blasting and then once i run out of all of those other skills we go double tap and start using burst fires while putting or adding in bullfire blasts between each set of burst fires. So this is my favorite composition, but you could definitely do things like switch out double tab for collateral. You could definitely switch out coffin maker. I was running bullet hill for most of the game. I just liked the 
delayed hits. Also good for mobs and just generally being able to continuously use bullfire blasts while the bullet hail is going down. Now you can also just run duration. I think this is pretty good as well. If you want to be a little bit more defensive, a little bit more safe. If you aren't, if you have trouble dodging all the skills, you can run du duration as well. It's generally fine. In terms of slack shot, I really haven't found a particularly good window where I want to be running this. But every other, each of the other skills, I've definitely spent some time with. Now, when it comes to weapons, the weapon situation for this game is pretty simplistic every time. You start off with pretty much the crit weight weapon in the early game, early to mid game. Honestly, you can use this weapon until you get the your terminus weapon. I really don't think you have to run the ascension weapon at all. You definitely can run the ascension weapon and as you level it up, it gets significantly better than anything you have. So if you just don't feel like rushing to the Terminus weapon or you just don't think you're going to get it, you can definitely start building up the Ascension weapon. It's just a lot of resources to build it up um, consistently. So that's something you have to be willing to do. You can definitely uh, skate by with just running um, the critical rate weapon, Bolt Omega, Tiamat Bolt Omega. You can definitely get it away with that. So. In the early game to mid game, this is the best weapon to use. Once you start leveling up your ascension weapon, then that becomes best. And once you get your terminus weapon, your late game weapon, that's going to be by far blow out any of the other weapons out of the water. And, and this really stays around for all the characters, uh, barring some special cases. But yeah, you can just, just continu continuously use crit rate weapon into ascension weapon into terminus late game weapon and you'll generally be pretty fine when it comes to the over masteries i would say the most important one is to get normal attack damage cap up as high as possible that is going to upgrade your bullfire blast and that's your key damage source so that's really what you're looking for when it comes to end game as well you basically just want all the other damage cap ups most of the general dps increases will just add to the damage cap so it's not like it's going to really affect you too much i will say critical hit rate up is also pretty good just if you are building where you want max crit rate you can definitely build where you don't need crit rate but it's pretty easy to get max crit if you do take um crit rate in the over mastery so normal attack damage cap up crit rate up those two i think can be really good and then you want to add some damage cap ups in the others, whether it's chain burst damage, skill damage, or even skybound art damage cap. Those can also help you out. Attack power up is decent, but a lot of times you'll just have damage cap anyway, so it won't contrib contribute too much. But if that helps you hit damage cap, that's fine. Uh, skill damage up, same th problem. Stun power is untested, so I don't really have too much opinion, but it's not really something I see people running a lot of, so not really going to recommend it here. And then health up and healing cap up, I think are just the low rolls of overmastery. You're generally in the late game going to get one shot in a lot of, for a lot of skills. So having these healing cap and health cap up doesn't really change the numbers too much. So overall, you're just looking for normal damage cap up as the priority but the other damage caps up are really good and critical hit rate up is also something you can run and not be sad about. Uh, now let's talk about some of the unique masteries for Rackham. There's a couple. So we have the retain bullseye blast charge. So this is just if you decide to dodge while you're charging a bullseye blast, you can, as long as you're holding your charge button, you'll continue resuming the charge after the dodge. So that's pretty useful for dodging skills getting perfect dodges, things like that. So something to keep in mind. And then we have the enhanced heat gauge during link time. So once you trigger link time, you're going to have max heat gauge for the dur duration of hint link time. So that's pretty useful to just pelt bullseye blast over and over and over until the opponent is dead. So just keep that in mind. Once you activate link time, feel free to wail away using bullseye blast since you're not going to lose any heat gauge. 
All right, let's talk about endgame sigil setups. A lot of characters follow a very similar outline when it comes to endgame sigil setups. First of all, if you can use your awakening sigil, definitely take advantage of it. And Rackham is one with fantastic awakening sigils. We have navigation where his three shot burst becomes a four shot burst. So pretty good increase in damage there. And Hellsman tenacity where his bullseye blast increases in damage and range. 50% range, 25% damage cap. So just a very nice set of sigils to add for Rackham. You definitely want to be using that if you can. And then following that, you want four damage cap sigils. You pretty much want to max your damage cap when you can. So adding all four will give you 60% usually. You might have to use five at the beginning since you're not going to have level 15 damage cap sigils. So essentially four to five damage cap sigils just to have max damage cap is pretty much core for all characters that you play. So definitely keep that in mind. Next up, you want to have the War Element Sigil. Now, this Sigil makes all attacks count as a superior element. Essentially, it boosts your damage by, I believe, 20%. So, the extra damage goes beyond the damage cap. So, this is a very important Sigil to have to increase your maximum damage output. So, it's pretty much mandatory in all DPS characters as well. So, you want to pick it up. I believe you can only get this through Kyrios and also the Kyrios have to be from Proud quests. Maybe Maniac also works as well, but I really haven't seen a lot of people getting it through the Maniac bosses. So you have to be pretty late in the game. So don't worry about it if you don't have it right now. Just keep farming and once you have it, add it in. The last type of extra damage sigils that you want to add is supplemental damage. Now this goes around the damage cap as well since it just adds extra hits on top of your current damage ability so it doesn't mess with damage cap as well. You want to add one to three of these sigils depending on how many you have and how much you want to invest in this type of extra damage. So this is another way of improving your damage output without messing with damage cap. You want to have some version of this in the end game. Now, once you've added all of your damage increasing sigils, you want to add sigils to fill that damage cap, sigils to give you attack damage and just make you actually hit the cap. If you just run these sigils without any damage increase, you're not really going to hit the cap in a lot of cases. So there's a couple for Rack Rackham, which are pretty good. Concentrated fire, stamina, tyranny, and critical hit rate. Those can really all help you get to the damage cap rate, you really want to mix and check using the testing dummy in the ship. See if you hit the damage cap consistently. So you're going to need a couple sigils for that just to hit that damage cap. Once you've gotten your damage cap increasing sigils and the sigils to fill that damage cap, the rest of your seals are kind of more flavor. I will say some considerations you really want to add into your your sigil comp is sigils that will keep you alive. So some of my current recommendations are Guts, Auto Revive, Potion Hoarder. Those three are really good for the late game pride mission since it just keeps you able to last longer, gives you a lot of resources to heal yourself back up. And it's just a very useful set of sigils to have. Now, some other Rackham specific sigils that I think are a little bit more defensive, a little bit more utility are Steady Focus and Improved Dodge. Now, Steady Focus is just really nice. You're in a lot of cases, you're going to be in the Bullseye Blast animation. Now, Steady Focus just lets you tank the damage without knocking you out of your charge ability. So just a very useful utility skill to have on Rackham. I would, I would very highly consider it. Improved Dodge just gives you more windows more time to dodge and it's just a nice defensive skill if you find yourself spamming dodges or running out of dodge charges relatively quickly now once you get past that once again the rest of these are more utility they're not core you can kind of mix and match depending on what you like to do i will suggest some of the sigils i think are pretty good for rackham as well in this department we have quick cooldown. Quick cooldown is always good for most characters. They just reduce your cooldowns. It's really not. Next up, we have Drain. Drain 
is something that can really heal up Rackham once you start doing a lot of damage. Since you fire lots of small damage procs, your health gain gets pretty consistent once you have it going. So it's a pretty nice utility skill to have if you want to add some drain tanking into your build. And then finally, we have low profile. If you just want to stick back, don't want to get aggro too much. I will say in pride, a lot of attacks hit everyone. So it doesn't really matter that you have this or not, but it can be useful for some of those small mobs to kind of ignore you and target some of the more tankier companions. Now, when it comes to party composition, Rackham can be played as main DPS. I think every character is playable in Pride in the final difficulty level, so just play what you think is fun would be my general advice. Now, lastly, I have a six second time attack rotation. I'm not using best weapons or anything like that, but it's just kind of showcasing how you want to attack with Rackham, some of the rotations you can do. There's always going to be improvements as people get better, but this is just kind of a ending guide to kind of show you how you want to be using your skills when you have them. That's my Rackham Endgame Guide. Hopefully you got something out of it. Hopefully you've learned. I generally want these type of videos to give you all you need to play Rackham on a high level without having to go around and shop through just looking at things. There wasn't a lot of this type of content right now, so I figured it's something I could do. So hope you like, enjoy it, and we'll see what type of characters I'm going to be playing and then making guides for take care and have a wonderful rest of your day. This is a post edit comment, but wow, that took forever. Definitely going to tone it back if I do another one, but yeah, take care.